You want to know how to win more games in Madden 24. I have three key tips that if you work on and improve, your win percentage will go up dramatically. I guarantee it. So sit back and relax. Because you know I got you. Before we get into the tip video, if you are new to my channel and like Madden tip videos and content related like this, subscribe, like the video, and turn those notifications on. There are three very important tips when playing Madden that if you are able to master these tips, you will win a lot of a game. Knowing how to do these three tips is very important in winning online head-to-head, -head, Madden Ultimate Team, franchise, whatever you're doing. We'll go over those three tips. The first tip is know how to block a blitz or the meta blitz that's out right now. Most players will use the blitz to get you to pass quickly or to stop the run because they don't have good run defense. There are two key concepts to blocking the blitz in Madden 24. The first is the easiest. If you don't need to pass, audible to a run play if you know your opponent is blitzing. Run plays work great against the blitz, especially if your opponent has pass committed. I have tons of run plays here on my channel. If you're looking for some great run plays that will work against all the blitzes, and every defense. Check the links below. The second is slide protection and utilizing play action plays to block the blitz, especially edge blitzes. Play action plays block blitzes better if your opponent doesn't pass commit. The blitzing defender will attack the ball carrier instead of going straight to the quarterback. You can cancel the play action by pressing R2 when the QB starts to hand the ball off. This will help in confusing the defense to look to the running back first. Second, utilize slide protection if you know heat is coming from one side of the defense. This will help your offensive line get in better position to block and pick up the blitz. The next tip will take your game from a standard good Madden player to an elite status. The next tip is dominate in the red zone on offense and defense. Having good red zone offense that guarantees you touchdowns will always put you in the line for easy victories. Make sure you have great offenses, run plays, and pass plays that work great in the red zone. Practice your red zone go-to plays from the 20-yard line, 15-yard line, 10-yard line, 5-yard line, and on the goal line. Utilize power runs on the goal line and have guaranteed pass plays that have easy, easy reads for easy touchdowns. Practice these runs and passes so when it comes down to it, you can do it without hesitation. On the flip side, make sure you have great, not good or okay red zone defense. Most of my victories are won with defense, especially in the red zone. Most opponents will go for it on fourth down in the red zone, especially when they are down in points. Practice your defense in the red zone. Know your defense weakness. Take away first reads in the pass. Have great run defense, especially RPO run defense. 75% of players will run RPO run plays in the red zone because they don't want to pass. Utilize zone defense instead of man defense. The closer you get to the goal line. The last and I feel most important tip is clock management. The proper way to manage the clock will depend on whether you're on offense or defense and if you're leading or if you're trailing in the score. Before we get into the clock management breakdown, in the settings for the coin toss, if you win, make sure you set it to kick the ball off. And if you do not win, make sure you go with the wind. 
this puts you at a major advantage if you go into halftime with a lead. You come out and you get the ball with a lead. That is a great position to be in. Now, clock management is crucial, especially at the end of the second quarter and the fourth quarter. The goal is to be in the best position where you control the clock, burn as much time to force the defense to have no chance to come back. There are four situations when clock management comes into play. You're on offense and leading. You're on defense and leading. These are the two best scenarios. Or you're on offense and trailing. And you're on defense and trailing. These are the two worst scenarios. We'll go over what you should look at and what you should do if you're on offense and leading. You want to only call running plays up the middle and to the wide side of the field. Don't run out of bounds. Now, usually your opponent, if he is good, will notice that you're doing only run plays. So you will need to pass eventually. When you do, have a play that you will complete the pass. If not, take the sack. Incomplete passes stop the clock. Remember, it's better to run clock and punt than to risk stopping the clock with a deep pass and throwing an interception. In coaches' adjustment, especially if the game is close, set the ball carrier for the running back and receivers to conservative. This will protect the ball more and reduce your chances of fumbling. Also, when running, hold R1 on PlayStation and RB on Xbox to cover up the ball when being tackled. When you do call a play, take time off the clock. Wait as long as you can before snapping the ball. The next scenario we'll go over is if you're on defense and leading. You want to utilize your best passing defense. They will be passing mostly. Match personnel with their formation. Don't blitz too much, but do blitz. They will try to run out of bounds. Shade to the outside with your defense to try to prevent them from doing that. Focus on deep parts of the field. The flats don't matter. Cover two zone plays should not be called in this situation. The next scenario is if you're on offense and trailing. Call only pass plays. Course the deep sidelines. Get out of bounds. Throw the ball away. Stop the clock. Hold triangle on PlayStation, Y on Xbox to no huddle. Spike the ball to stop the clock by pressing O on PlayStation and B on Xbox after the play has completed. Going back to tip number two, red zone offense. If you're on offense and trailing and you're in the red zone, if you're down by two, only call running plays. Chew some of that clock. Stay in bounds. Force your opponent to call timeouts. If you're down by more than nine, set coaches' adjustments to aggressive. You have nothing to lose at this point. You want to break tackles. You want to fight for extra yards. You want to force your way into that end zone. The last scenario is the worst scenario you can be in. You're on defense and trailing, and possibly you're losing by more than eight points. You want to set your tackling to aggressive. You also want to set the strip ball to aggressive. It doesn't matter at this point. You can increase your chances of doing a hit stick or stripping the ball and get the ball back and try to mount your comeback. In this scenario, you want your opponent to not chew clock. So you might have to utilize your timeouts. But keep in mind, when you do get the ball back, if you do get the ball back, you'll need those timeouts. So tread lightly with your timeouts. Pray to the Madden gods that you can get that ball back and mount one of the best comebacks ever. That concludes the video, guys. Improve on these three tips. And I guarantee you will win more games than Madden. It's your boy Wayne6578. If I'm outie, but I'll be.